Hi everybody, JJ with Experiences My Dog. Uh, for those of you out there that are really looking to, let's say, improve the quality of the kibble that you're feeding your dog, or maybe just improving the overall dog food that you're providing to your dog, and maybe is more specifically in tune with, let's say, their weight, their activity level, with certain conditions that they might have, uh, you'd normally have to consider, I'd say, the more premium offerings that are available in terms of cooked dog foods, which, um, as you guys have seen in content that we've covered on the channel, can be actually quite expensive. Um, while it definitely can be very beneficial and it has a lot of value, again, that cost can be very prohibitive. So enter in a new market option, really kind of a first option in terms of offering you a customized kibble-based option shipped direct to you. So you're able to offer something that's a little bit more specifically profiled to your dog to account for their activity, for their weight, for their breed, their age, um, but at that more accessible price point that kibble tends to offer. And so there's gonna be a couple other aspects to it that I think make this an interesting choice for you guys to consider and, and just offer this as an alternative in terms of different choices that are out there in terms of dog food. So let's find out more about what Crafted Kibble is bringing to the table in terms of dog food. Okay, so before we jump into it, I do wanna give you guys a quick note that we were actually contacted by Crafted Kibble uh, to actually uh, take a look essentially at this. Um, so they didn't actually ask us to provide any specifics and types of the review. They just said, are we interested in kind of evaluating this? And I said, definitely I was interested because I've had a lot of feedback from you guys that have checked out our impressions and our reviews, especially on cooked dog food that say, hey, I really love those options. I appreciate the higher quality, but it's really expensive. And so is there kind of anything else that you might recommend? And so I thought that when Crafted Kibble contacted us, it was just really good timing to align with the kind of content that we're doing on the cooked dog food kind of comprehensive analysis side. Again, they don't have any influence over what I'm ultimately communicating to you guys, um, but I wanted to let you know essentially just for transparency that they did reach out to us in terms of this sample. Um, I will be kind of looking to see if I can actually work though on getting more, whether we have to end up purchasing it to do maybe a longer term review because I'm interested in seeing that, especially for our dogs because for the most part, they're predominantly either fed a cooked based diet or a raw based diet, um, but I'm not necessarily opposed to um, more traditional based option depending on the quality and other aspects. So if we talk about the company itself, the company is brand new. They just pretty much kicked off production here in 2019. They are based here in the United States um, and they actually all do their manufacturing here also in the United States with sourcing they're saying uh, is also based in the United States for ingredients. So those are all positives that we like to see. Um, they do communicate that they do actually batch based testing on each one of the actual essentially batches that get created for the dog food, which is another positive. So. Ultimately, of course, there's right now literally hundreds of different types of kibble based of dog foods that are on the market. Um, so really, how does this differentiate itself from the vast majority of those? I'd say this is much closer to what you would generally be experiencing when you talked about, let's say, those premium options in terms of cooked dog foods like Ollie, the farmer's dog, Nom Nom Now, and other options that are available on the market. Why? Because essentially this gives you the ability to customize it specific to your dog. So it pretty much works very similar to those where you're gonna go to a website, you can go ahead and populate information for your dog. Um, so this is gonna be things like your dog's name, it's gonna be its breed, it's gonna be its weight, its activity level, and other conditions uh, that your dog might have, whether it may be that your dog's underweight or maybe your dog's overweight, maybe it's got shedding, maybe it's gonna have joint issues, right? Depending on these different type of factors, ultimately their algorithm will come to define essentially a caloric, um, let's say target uh, that your dog is gonna to wanna to be fed. And, and then from there, of course, the supplementation of the ingredients that helps to, let's say, combat or support, you know, better health and ultimately hopefully resolve the issues that you noted if let's say your dog was, let's say, underweight or it was overweight or, you know, um, something along those lines based on the profiling that you have. So that's something you generally don't see, of course, with a general dog food that you purchase. Um, the reality is also that they're also different in terms that they're giving you a pre-portioned quantity. So uh, for most people that feed kibble, they're feeding either kind of free feeding, uh, which I generally am never an advocate of, or they're feeding based on the guidelines of kind of just the manufacturer. And that can sometimes be really off. The reality is if you take a look at the overall statistics, almost, you know, between 50 to as much as almost 60% of dogs are obese, they're overweight. And a lot of that is because there's essentially too much calories being provided to the dogs for the amount of activity that the dog's being, the dog's receiving. Um, and there's of course other factors like the dog's breed, um, you know, and other characteristics that you would wanna take into play. And so here, the fact that they're essentially giving you these pre-portioned packages, right, um, which they specify two pouches a day is what you're gonna be feeding your dog. You don't have to worry about essentially one, 
knowing, hey, I need to kind of scoop things out, which for a lot of people, scooping also isn't necessarily accurate. If you think you're eyeballing it, sometimes you can be off by a few ounces and that can make a difference. Um, you know, we weigh our dog's food. Every single one of the things that gets put in, it's a, it's an, a general weighing so that we know exactly consistently how much we're giving our dogs so that we can really know that consistency in terms of what they're being fed and how that uh, affects their overall weight. And that's what I recommend. And that's ultimately what you're getting here is you're getting pre-portioned packages, which does simplify the overall experience for you, similar to these premium kind of cooked dog food offerings where they give you many times a prepackaged quantity specific to your dog. So that's, I think, a nice plus point where you don't have to kind of worry about anything. You know, this is all I'm going to need to feed for my dog. I can either give it once a day or I can do it twice a day, depending on kind of what works best for you from a feeding proposition um, and your sit. So that is definitely a nice in that regard. The other benefit too is, is that this is generally going to be a fresher based solution. You're going to get more immediate access to a fresher base of food. So the nutritional density is going to be higher. It's going to be better. Um, where, you know, sometimes if let's say you're buying a dag bag of dog food, you don't know if that bag of dog food was produced six months ago and it was sitting in a distribution center and then it kind of got shipped out to wherever you were buying it from and now you're then buying it. And then ultimately from the date of production to when you fed it to your dog, it could have been six months, eight months, it could have been a year, especially because in situations, a lot of those foods are using some form of preservatives to make them shelf stable uh, for those periods of time. And so here, you have a significantly fresher option, uh, which I think is always beneficial. If you can always get closer to that freshest point of um, you know, production, that's always gonna benefit your dog. And I think increased palatability, um, you know, increase the nutritional benefits that your dog are gonna be getting. So, um, you know, how does that ultimately break down? Like I said, in terms of the rest of the experience, there are a couple of things to kind of factor in. One, uh, when you actually take a look at the dog food in itself, the kibble sizing for some people might be like, hey, this seems a little bit kind of, um, smaller maybe than some of the other kibbles that are on the market. I think it's kind of the right balance to work for small breeds all the way up to kind of large breed based dogs. Um, but the quantity for some people might be this one we profiled for um, Bowie and kind of a target weight. And so again, most of our dogs are all generally between about 50 and about 60 pounds. Bowie should be ideally around, uh, you know, about 50 ish pounds in terms of that. And so quantity wise, it might seem like it's a lower quantity in terms of the two pouches, but part of what they're advocating and their ingredient composition is that they're using uh, not only primary animal protein, but then they're also using um, meals. Now there's a lot of kind of back and forth between the use of, I'd say, a meal, uh, which is generally going to be essentially an animal protein that's been dried out, essentially cooked, so you don't have any additional water content. So that this, when this gets added in, you get generally significantly more of that protein. So it is a way to kind of amp up the, the nutritional density. Now there are some specifics that get into, um, you know, the complexity of really, re, whether meal um, is going to be as fully nutritional dense as let's say individual based um, proteins that get added in that are essentially not previously, let's say cooked or dried beforehand before they're added in. Um, but it is still a reasonable based approach. And when done with other quality ingredients, I think it still can provide a solid foundation in terms of the overall nutritional benefits that it provides to your dog. And that's really been their uh, approach that they've had here. And that's also why they say that the overall quantity that they're giving you would let's say be less than you might be feeding your dog. So as an example, maybe the recommendation on your general bag of dog food might be two and a half to three and a half cups, right? So that could be significant, that could be a lot. It could be like 16 to like almost maybe like 24 ounces or something like that. And this will maybe be, maybe it's like half almost as far as what you feel that you're feeding your dog. But because they're saying that it's more nutritionally dense because of that higher percentage of that meal that's been utilized, um, you're essentially not feeding as much your dog. I can definitely tell you, I have never followed the manufacturer's guideline on feeding our dogs. Um, uh, by you know general values, we generally feed significantly less and all my dogs have outstanding you know uh, health they have great activity levels um, and you know of course uh, from all the other aspects of their health they're doing really really well from supplementation so really you want to I see no issues with their approach if the ingredient composition and the things are correctly balanced um, so beyond that um, let's talk about those ingredient compositions so they've got a couple of different uh, choices available to you this is I think a positive as well um, if you're looking for flexibility and kind of customizing this experience based on your personal preferences as well as what you think might work well for your dog, they do have a grain-free based option and a grain-based option. I'm not 100% opposed to having grains. I mean, uh, our dogs predominantly do eat a raw-based diet and generally for our raw foods, we prefer to not have 
a lot of those carbs based present. So we really prioritize animal protein and then organ meat. So that's going to be things like beef liver, beef heart, you know, um, different things along those lines. And here you don't have any organ based proteins. They've kind of gone for, I think, a more kind of holistic balanced approach at animal proteins along with carbs with fats and kind of some other ingredients that help to kind of create supplementation. So it's a bit of balance kind of across the board, but I think that for some people that are concerned about, hey, I still want to add in some of these items and, you know, carbs can provide some immediate energy benefits to a dog and balance certain things out. And when there are some carbs that are better than others. And so here we're not seeing poor things like just a basic rice, at least we're having, let's say like brown rice or We've got some other things kind of going on there. Um, you know, there is kind of a, a more balanced approach that's being provided. Um, so it's nice at least as you as the owner can go in and define, hey, I either want grains or I don't want grains based on what my preference is. And they will still look to make up that rest of that profile uh, to balance out the nutritional benefits that should be provided to your dog with that criteria that you've defined. Um, now they don't have a specific option that is allergy based. So if your dog, if you know that your dog has an allergy or sensitivity to a specific type of protein, this is something that um, I wish could be improved upon and it's not present right now within their profiling option. You do have the ability to say, hey, my dog doesn't like chicken or it doesn't like fish or it doesn't like lamb. So somewhat to a degree, I guess you could account for some um, type of allergies, um, but that's not, I think it's not ideal, I think in the way that it's structured in there, but at least you do have the ability that if you've had experience feeding a certain type of protein, that if it's one of those three, they will essentially make an adjustment as well to allow the dog to have another protein option uh, to hopefully help to resolve that essentially concern whether your dog didn't like, let's say that other quote unquote protein from a taste perspective or because there was actually a food sensitivity or an allergy. Um, in terms of the actual, uh, all the proteins that are available, we've got trout, we've got salmon, turkey, uh, lamb, and chicken. So that's a pretty good range. Um, normally I love to see beef and pork would also be nice, but lamb is a really good choice because most dogs um, generally don't usually have any type of food sensitivity to lamb because it's a more novel type of protein choice. Chicken is usually historically one of the most common types of um, proteins that dogs tend to have kind of allergies uh, to or sensitivities because of course it's so prominently uh, utilized in so many different things. But in a lot of other dog foods, there's a heavy amount of ingredient mixture. Now, if the ingredient mixture is very complementary, there's a lot of, let's say, additional things like superfoods that are added in, eggs and berries and sweet potatoes and kale and spinach, um, you know, coconut oil. There could be all kinds of other things that have beneficial values, but the more things that you add in also, if you are kind of dealing with challenges that your dog might have in terms of food sensitivities or allergies that can make it a headache for you. This is especially problematic with a lot of dog foods where they have multi animal proteins. So they literally have but beef, chicken, uh, you know, pork and turkey all in the same ingredient mix. And that can play havoc with you knowing is it the turkey that's causing a problem with my dog? Is it the lamb that was causing an issue with my dog? Is it, you know, which one is causing the overall problems? The good thing I will say overall, while they, they don't have any kind of 100% fully, I'd say single base ingredient compositions, they're pretty close to it. So you generally don't have like a turkey and chicken based mix um, within this. So that is pretty positive. Usually in some of these, you will see maybe some, five, some form of a, like a white fish meal um, in addition to let's say maybe the other protein. But again, most dogs generally don't have food sensitivities to something like white fish. Uh, which is kind of a generalization of different types of fish options. So, you know, for most intents and purposes, this is a pretty good choice to transition your dog over to if you've been experiencing different types of food sensitivity issues or you're looking for something that I'd say is more limited ingredient in nature to minimize different types of reactions as your, might, your dog might have. So um, that's, I think, another plus point that you have within their profiling, that they're giving you enough choice that you can hopefully find the right type of protein choice that works well for your dog and also isn't inherently baked in with so many options that it might be more problematic for your dog to transition into and might have a flare up. Um, so that's, I think, uh, another point that they have that works for them in relation to um, the way it works. Now, when you receive everything, it's gonna come essentially in this box. Now you do have a sample option that's available to you. So if you kind of just wanna try things out, you can pay for $6.95 in shipping and they will send you a sample. So you can at least try out the kibble, see if your dog likes it just by feeding them a little bit. And then of course you can commit to um, the weekly subscription to keep getting the dog food on a consistent basis if that sample works out. So that's a nice thing also uh, in terms of just kind of trying things out 
but when you receive it, there is kind of this little profiling um, kit and welcome kit that you get. So it'll come inside a little envelope that you'll get, which is cool. Um, the first thing you'll see is kind of this little profile. It has your dog's name, has the kind of key information, a little picture that you upload. It'll tell you the exact ingredients, the percentage in terms of the protein, the fat, the fiber, the moisture, um, how it actually is providing specific types of things, whether it's gut health, brain health, um, skin and coat health. It tells you specifically, boldly right there, feed two pouches a day. So that's really clear and easy. Um, they do also give you a full transition guide. If you've never kind of gone through the process of transitioning your dog, there are steps that you wanna go through as far as not having your dog be kind of bombarded with a new protein, which can cause them to have, you know, diarrhea or bowel issues or kind of upset stomach. So it'll guide you through the process of like, hey, there's different things you wanna do. These are the steps that you wanna consider. Um, gives you information about their ingredients, delivery dates, how you can contact them. Kind of just a full breakdown and it's really well structured in terms of that base information. Um, they also give you information about kind of the nutrient density, why this might be a little bit different compared to let's say your traditional dog food you might be feeding your dog and as far as the quantity, and then just also kind of a little bit general kind of like welcome and hey, thanks for being part of Crafted Kibble. Um, those are all kind of cool things and all things that I'd like to see. And you know, compared to of course, let's say a traditional bag of dog food where it's just maybe some basic feeding guidelines, this is pretty well presented and clear to offer you, I think a better understanding of how to transition your dog um, to this dog food and hopefully have a better experience. Um, you're also, at least in ours, we got a cool little bandana, um, you know, that says crafted kibble on it. I assume because Bowie's a girl, they gave us a pink one. I'm not 100% sure that if you had a boy, uh, if you got a different color, but hey, nothing wrong with some boys rocking some pink either. Um, so uh, overall, that's what you would kind of be getting when you talk about the initial box. Um, you know, you're gonna get the pouches, and like I said, that's all based ultimately off the profiling that you have. So, um, because this is fairly new, I've got just some quick, couple of quick, quick notes that I just wanna finish up on here, but I think I already noted on them. In terms of the protein options, again, you've got trout, salmon, turkey, lamb, and chicken. Um, there is, like I said, as of right now, no options for beef, pork, or something like venison, uh, which would be cool as, it, again, having, let's say, uh, another type of novel-based protein. Um, we noted that of course you have different activity levels that you can set and conditions. Uh, the conditions that specifically you can go ahead and note are gonna be weight, skin, stomach, shedding, joint, underweight, or known. Um, the other uh, thing that you can profile for your dog is let's say if you have a professional or a working dog, so a dog that specifically has high demands, um, they usually have a much higher caloric intake um, to really be able to maintain the best performance possible. And so uh, you do have that ability to go ahead and profile for let's say specific working breed or professional based dog. So if you are somebody that falls within that group, they do have options available for you as well. Um, so ultimately I think, you know, the last points that are really important here are gonna be, of course, maybe some of the most important, that's gonna be cost. Um, when we take a look at this overall in the respective landscape, actually I think that they've done the job right in terms of hitting a price point that allows them to be significantly cheaper than these more premium cooked dog food based options, but still giving you a good choice that's fresh production, uh, pretty reasonable ingredient composition. Like I said, I would have loved to see the inclusion of let's say an organ meat um, and maybe a couple little superfoods or some stuff in there to just kind of up it up a little bit more. Um, but cost wise, it is definitely competitive with where the majority of what kibble owners spend. Uh, the vast majority of kibble owners right now, I'd probably say spending between about $45 to maybe about $60. $60 is definitely moving in a little bit more of the premium market, but if you take a look at you know leading retailers, uh, whether you're talking about the PetSmart, Petco, Amazon, Chewy, that's where people are spending for about the 24 to about a 30 pound bag of dog food, is you're gonna be spending in that 45 uh, to about $60 a month. Um, that's gonna usually be for somewhere between about a 24 to almost to about 30 pounds. Now, depending on the weight of your dog, that's gonna take you about one month. If it's 24 and you're following roughly feeding guidelines and you're not going under the feeding guidelines from the manufacturer, 24 would probably be a little bit less than you would need for a whole month. So you'd still have to buy another set of dog food to kind of keep transitioning month to month. So you're probably spending closer to almost that $60. And to get a 30 pound bag, you're probably closer to almost that $60, but that would cover you for the month. Here, most of the protein options, so let's say chicken, which is probably gonna be the one that's gonna be most commonly recommended to you, is about $15 a week. So you add that up, 15 times two is 30, times uh, two again is gonna be four weeks, that's gonna be $60 a month. So that pretty much puts you at the same amount that you're gonna be spending monthly for most general dog foods on the market that you would be buying anywhere else. But here, at least you get that benefit, like I said, that you can control with specificity 
uh, the protein choice, you have it uh, freshly produced and shipped out directly to you, which also saves you on cost, right, in terms of, you know, time and the cost, you know, to go out and be able to pick those things up. So. Overall, you know, I think the initial impressions are positive. Now we are gonna be looking to do a more long-term review on this. We definitely have a lot of questions to ask about, you know, sourcing production, transparency actions, um, you know, ethical uh, sourcing aspects, and a lot of the things that we detail within our food-based reviews. And we are definitely gonna be sending those questions out to Crafted Kibble so that we can give you guys a little bit more of a long-term experiential review, um, you know, and also have follow-up insights. But I think if you're interested in trying this out, you definitely can do that. Um, we'll leave links in the description below where if you want to be able to go ahead and, like I said, sign up for Crafted Kibble, try them out. Um, you can find those links in the description. Um, and I'd love to hear your guys' feedback and your thoughts on this as an option compared to, you know, those cooked dog food options and whether this is something you think you would want to transition your dog from feeding right now. Um, you know, and one other note that I do want to make is that while they're not communicating this, the base ingredient compositions also give you flexibility and agility that if you want to be able to, I think, do rotational base feeding, um, that's the nice thing is you can quickly also do this on a profile based structure on the site. So, you know, we recommend um, rotational base feeding to maintain strong gut health and also just protein diversity and overall just appetite, appetite diversity for your dog. So it's nice with this amount of protein. Um, that you have that flexibility that you could transition, you know, from salmon after three months to let's say lamb, and then after lamb from three months, you know, to trout or to, you know, um, turkey, right? You know, the choice is up to you, but that gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, but overall, you know, I think the initial impressions are positive here. And if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, or feedback, things that you want to see covered in the more extensive review or anything that we've already talked about, feel free to go ahead and do that down in the comment section below. And as always, if you guys have not hit that subscribe button, please consider hitting that subscribe button, the notification, like, um, and also go ahead and share this out if you think somebody might be interested in trying this out as an option to replace their dog food. So with that, as always, take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day, and don't forget to give your dogs a treat from us.